Okay, we're going to talk about moving the capital, Rome, to Constantinople. Think about this. What if somebody came up with a proposal to move the capital of the United States into the interior of the country, like the St. Louis, so more people would have access to our nation's capital since it's more in the middle of the country rather than on the East Coast? Do you think people would be upset? No, I would think so. I mean, Washington, D.C. has been our nation's capital for over 200 years. But let's say people say, hey, we're holding on to old traditions. It's an old city. It was built in the 1790s, even though it's been updated. Maybe we should create a new capital city in the middle of a cornfield in Iowa and make it all modernized. Well, that's really what what faced the Roman Empire. The city of Rome didn't exist for 200 years, but close to a thousand years. And it was a bold move by Constantine to move the capital because no longer were you a Roman because you were born in Rome. Now Roman citizenship was extended to people throughout the empire who maybe had never stepped foot in Rome. So you didn't need Rome anymore. The idea of the Roman Empire was far greater than a city at this point. So why did Constantine move the capital? First, there were problems with the city of Rome. It was a very old city. You learned when you looked at the top 10 theories of why Rome fell that the large farmers, the large estates, were killing the small farmer. The small farmer could no longer compete, and they were moving into Rome to take advantage of the bread and circuses. So the poor and the Germanic people were moving from Rome to find food, to find housing. But because of that, what was happening was that was becoming a drain on the city of Rome. They couldn't upkeep the city. They couldn't repair roads, repair buildings. Um, overcrowding was bad sanitation for the city. Crime started to increase in the city of Rome. And with that, you had, at the same time, you had the wealth of Rome moving as the rich started to, again, create these large estates outside of Rome into the conquered areas um, near the Balkan Peninsula, where we, we see um, Austria today, etc. You know, even think about it, that Diocletian himself, the emperor before Constantine, was not ruling from Rome. He was ruling from the east. In fact, think about when he divided the Roman Empire the east-west. He chose to be in the east because that's where the wealth was. All the money was moving out of Rome and moving east. And like we said, Rome was an old city. The infrastructure, the roads, the buildings were decaying and they weren't being prepared, repaired. So it wasn't a very, it wasn't the great city it once was anymore. So that was one reason why Constantine was able to encourage and, and was able to move the capital of Constantinople. Another reason why moving the capital with a smart idea by Constantine was it made it easier to defend the empire. Constantinople would be halfway between the two frontiers that concerned the Romans. The first frontier was the Danube River. It was a nice natural boundary between the Roman Empire and the Germanic barbarians. And it was easier to get troops from Constantinople out to the Danube River. But the main enemy of the Romans at this time was heading towards the Euphrates River and the Persians. So again, it made it easier to get troops going in that direction to defend the boundary on the Euphrates River against the Persian Empire. Next is trade. You see, when the Roman Empire began, when Rome became a great city, they were able to defeat Carthage to control the trade on the Mediterranean Sea. However, over the years, 
trade started coming in from all areas of the Eastern Hemisphere. So no longer was it just important to control the Mediterranean. You, want, you needed access to Asia, to Africa as well. And Constantinople provided that. You had still had your access to Europe since Constantinople straddled both Europe and Asia. You could still you still control the Mediterranean Sea. You could take advantage of the river systems to get trade from Europe. Again, you were still able to access trade from Africa because you had that access to the Mediterranean Sea. But you also had a clear shot into Asia, the, the Chinese trade, mostly silk. And that's what that was the big luxury item coming from China, silk. And it was also easy to access the Indian Ocean trade while still having the Black Sea and the Mediterranean Sea there. So if you see, Constantinople is in the middle of all these trade routes. So it made it a very wealthy city. It was a stopover when trade was coming in from Europe, Africa, from north of the Black Sea, from Asia, from the Indian Ocean. Trade would come into Constantinople. So Constantinople was a big store. Think of it like a huge Walmart with trade coming in and goods coming in from all over the world. So it made Constantinople a very wealthy city. Constantinople was easily defended. Here is where Constantinople sat. It was between two straits, the Bosporus and the Dardanelles. Because of that, it kind of protected it from heavy storms that you would see if it was on a large sea. It was hard to get at because of these two um, straits. You could easily see if ships were coming in to the Sea of Marmara to attack you. This is a picture of Constantinople itself. As you see, it's surrounded on three sides by water, making it a peninsula. And since it's on a peninsula, you can only attack by land from one direction. Naval assaults are tough because as you're landing your ship and your men are getting off the ship, you're easily, you can easily be attacked. So a land attack is the primary way you would have attacked Constantinople. But because it's on a peninsula, you can only come at it from one direction. And because it's on a peninsula, Constantinople took advantage of that by building walls all around the city. Very um, easily defendable, tough to break walls. And we're going to learn more. I have a little video to show you after this that you can watch after this that shows you how great the walls of Constantinople were in defending the city. But the other thing that Constantinople did was they cr built a chain that went across this area called the Golden Horn, this little inlet. It went from one, went from Constantinople to where it said the town of Galatia there. And that prevented boats from going up that Golden Horn and landing on that side of the city. That, that's actually the best place to land a boat because again, with the smaller area of water, it made it, eat, it the, the water was calmer in there than on the Sea of Mamara. So ships tended to port on that side. So the way that Constantinople defended from enemy ships from coming up that Golden Horn to attack them was they had a chain that went underneath the inlet there. And when an enemy ship came up, they would crank the chain up above the water and the ships would be stopped there. And again, since they're stopped on the open water from the walls, they could easily attack the ships. So Constantinople being where it was, it was easily defendable. The last reason with the capital was that it was a new city. If you remember, at the Battle of Milvin Bridge, Constantine converted to Christianity. Now, Christianity was not the official religion of the empire yet. It would be in about 100 years. But Constantine gave special favors to Christianity, and he wanted to make the city a Christian city. Rome was built on the Roman gods. Constantinople would be built on the Christian god, on Jesus. And we can see that by how many churches he built, statuary that he built towards to Christianity. Um, it's not that he totally erased everything from the old Roman ways, but definitely Constance, 
Constantinople had things reflecting the new Christian culture that was coming in. Also, it was a new city. All the buildings were new. Um, and it, it kind of reflected the greatness of Constantine himself, that he could build this great new capital city. And as Constantine moved himself to Constantinople, wealth, the wealthy, the intellectuals, the powerful also moved east. I mean, if you're an up-and-comer here in the empire, you want to be where the emperor is. And the emperor was no longer in Rome. So if you wanted to be powerful, if you wanted to be noticed, if you, if you're, if you were a young guy, young girl who wanted to be noticed by the emperor, you went to Constantinople. Because that's where the power now was. It was no longer in Rome. And of course, in, in doing this, it again weakened Rome even more because again, more wealth, more of the intellectual class, um, the powerful, they're all abandoning Rome to head to Constantinople. And that's um, why the capital and some of the reasons why the capital was moved to Constantinople and why it was successful as a capital for about, well, for over a thousand years.